As expected, the machining of the rear coupling rods was very much a repeat of the processes taken for the leading rods. The only notable difference being the fork at the knuckle joint. And I've stuck in a couple of pictures here so you can see how I went about that. The knuckle joint bushes really were a simple turning exercise, so I won't bore you with the details. But here we can see the first one test fitted to one of the leading coupling rods. It's not really visible in the video, but the bush is slightly thicker than the actual coupling rod, which is important because it's the bush that needs to be making contact with the moving surfaces on the training coupling rod. The knuckle joint pins were also an easy turning exercise. I used some 6mm silver steel bar, turned down a shoulder for about 6mm and threaded that at 4BA. And before removing it from the chuck, I did a quick test fit with one set of coupling rods and then cut it to length and faced off the other end. With the bushes and pins turned, of course I couldn't resist the test fit. You'll notice here that the rear trailing crank pin bushes have not yet been Loctited onto the rods. But I assembled the whole lot and fit to one side before turning the frames around and fitting the other set to the other side. For the driving wheels I have turned a little bush. This is just to take the place of the connecting rod so that when I fit the return crank it actually holds the coupling rods in place. Being able to get both sets on was a big step forwards even though there were a couple of tight spots. I've yet to open up the bushes on the trailing and leading crank pins and hopefully that will give me just enough to stop the rods from binding. Next on the list was the caps for the trailing crank pins. Again, a simple exercise using some half inch, therefore 12.7 mil silver steel bar. After facing off, I drilled and tapped a 316 by 40 TPI hole in the center before moving on to the miller machine and cutting a couple of flats. Don's design does call for a number 60 hole to be drilled through the flats. Ultimately for a roll pin to be fitted to prevent the cap from unscrewing, but I think drilling the corresponding hole through the crank pin is going to be quite difficult and probably result in a broken drill bit, so I'm minded just to go with thread lock, but I'll make that decision later on. After parting off I wanted to clean up what would become the inside face of the cap, and in my box of bits and bobs I did find this mandrel that already has a 316 by 40 TPI stub on it, so I mounted that in the chuck and use it as a mandrel to put a finish cut on that inside face. The caps for the leading crank pins are again a simple turning exercise. The important thing to note here is that when installed they do need to be flush with the outer surface of the coupling rods to ensure that they don't foul with the connecting rods. I started with a bit of mild steel bar which I faced off and then turned down to 15mm OD and then I drilled and countersunk a 4BA clearance hole before parting off. On the other end I needed to turn the shoulder so I referred back to my previous method and Loctited the workpiece onto a mandrel. I got a bit carried away with applying the Loctite and almost managed to glue the drill bit in place too but I managed to pull it out just before it went off. Before turning the shoulder I did do a quick check with the dial gauge. Concentricity is quite important here and a run out of 0.05mm is just fine. Ideally I should have lapped the bushes against their respective crank pins but now the bushes are secured into the coupling rod so that's not really an option. So I ended up using this short piece of silver steel bar which is the same size as the crank pins mounted in the chuck in the milling machine with some brasso as my lapping paste. This is not what you would call good engineering practice but hopefully it will do the job 
and I'll repeat it for all four bushes. To fit the rods they need to go on as a set, not individually. This is the left hand side of the loco with the trailing wheel closest to the camera. After a good coating of oil I ease the left hand rods into place. As I fit the cap for the trailing crank pin, the 1mm hole for the roll pin is just visible. But as I said earlier, I'm not overly keen on trying to drill through the crank pin for that. The cap for the leading crank pin is held in place by a 4BA countersunk screw. And we can see here how it's flush with the outside of the coupling rod. For the driving crank pin I first fit this little bush that takes the place of the connecting rod before fitting the return crank along with its associated taper pin and clamping screw. I will replace this screw with a hex head at some point but I don't have any to hand just yet. With the left rods fitted I then move on to the right side and repeat the process. And as I called out earlier, the fact that I could get both sets of rods on the wheels is actually a big step forward. My lapping work with the Brasso has made a slight difference, but there are still a couple of tight spots, so I probably need to do a little bit more. Or I could just leave it as is and let it wear in over time. On this rather positive note, I'll wrap this video up here. I'm not sure what I'm going to tackle next. I probably need to go and buy some castings for cylinders and work on those. But as always, thanks for watching.